Good day, everyone, and welcome to our SMART webinar series. This presentation will answer your questions about lead generation strategies in today's environment. The webinar presentation will be 45 to 60 minutes, followed by Q&A session. Before we get started, I'd like to go over a few items so you know how to participate in today's event. You will have the opportunity to submit text questions to today's presenter by typing your questions into the questions pane of your control panel. You may send your questions in at any time during the presentation. We will collect these and address them during the Q&A session at the end. I'd like to welcome our speaker, Valerie Whitman, VP of Senior Living with Leading Response. Uh, Valerie is a senior care executive with more than 15 years experience in the industry specifically in sales and marketing, as well as operations. She's worked as a regional director for Benchmark Senior Living and a national senior care operations director with Care.com. Valerie helps senior care providers maximize their customer acquisition efforts using proven lead generation solutions based on consumer behavior analytics. Valerie has two bachelors, one in business administration from Boston University and the other in leadership from Northeastern University, as well as a master's of science in marketing from Southern New Hampshire University. So Valerie, I feel like a slacker, but I would like to welcome you. <laughs> and thank you for, <laughs> thanks so much for presenting today. Oh, thanks for having me, Debbie. I appreciate it. It's always good to chat with uh, Senior Living Smart members and uh, certainly given the environment that we're in, we're happy to be able to connect with everyone today. So thank you and thank you everyone on the call for your time. So let's go ahead and jump right in. Um, you know, I just want to take a moment and thank everyone on the call. As Debbie just mentioned, I come from the senior living space and can appreciate the challenges that each community faces as you put these COVID-19 outbreak plans in place and you know what that really means to every staff member and every resident and every family member who is you know most likely unable to come into the building and see their their loved one I think we're all seeing on social media the uh, creative ways families are are uh, seeing their loved ones that are residents in the communities. And so just a heartfelt thank you to everyone on the call today and to your teams from everyone here at Leading Response. And I know I speak for Senior Living Smart as well. So just a, a quick uh, background on who Leading Response is for those of you who don't know, uh, we are a premier provider of customer acquisition solutions. Um, we focus primarily on the 55 plus and older segment. So we're in a couple of different vertical lines you can see here from the information uh, on your screen, but essentially we are focusing on uh, financial wealth managers, uh, advisors, also senior living, legal, so your estate planners, your elder law attorneys, healthcare, um, as well as uh, healthcare insurance, so the Medicare, Medicaid, you know, the dual eligible uh, that some of you are, are working with, and then elective medical markets, so, you know, dental, uh, stem cell research, uh, that is one of our newest verticals. And so, you know, regardless of the vertical that we're in, we are focused on that same consumer segment, and we have quite a bit of data, you can see from some of the numbers here, but really uh, what we do is we use that data from consumer behaviors and from uh, you know, the, the the large number of campaigns that we do uh, both offline and online to this consumer segment. And it really allows us to help our clients um, be more informed in terms of the marketing campaigns that they're executing and really utilize that uh, consumer behavior data. Uh, so a couple of facts here in terms of numbers, uh, client connections by the numbers. And the reason that, you know, this is really important to showcase here, this is not about leading response. This is about the ways that you can communicate with your consumers, with your adult children, with your potential residents that are not necessarily event-based. And I know as an organization, as an industry, um, we look at really focusing on that tour and that face-to-face -face interaction and building that relationship. And that is just as critical as it's always been. Unfortunately, right now, that's not something that we can do as marketers. And so it's an opportunity to recognize that there are many other ways that you can communicate with your consumer base, um, both your existing lead base, as well as continuing to drive new leads. And so these are just some of the numbers um, that, that leading response uh, has achieved in terms of being able to 
drive consumers to our clients. And so, you know, we've done a million uh, events. We've done um, 3,000 events that we average with uh, 5 million invitations each month that go out of our print shop. Um, you can see some of the numbers here in terms of uh, folks that respond to those events. And then, you know, also something important, that third bullet there is, you know, every month we connect over 1,000 consumers to our clients. And that's not done in that event uh, uh, environment. And so landing pages, phone appointments, in-person appointments. Um, and again, these are all things that you can start to do and, and some of you are already doing. And that tour is still critically important. And that relationship is you're just going to be doing it in a slightly different way until this pandemic you know, passes and we're able to get back to uh, normalcy and we're able to bring our guests into the community and, and meet with them face to face and you know, host those face to face marketing events again. So we, we all know by now uh, that COVID-19 is changing the way we engage with our prospects. And, and it's very important that we stay in front of this and we find new ways to communicate. And that's what we're going to talk about today. Um, but also to make sure that we provide that hope to our consumers, to our adult children, to our uh, potential residents, because they, they need that. We all need that, right? Um, but they need that because they recognize that they are the frailest of the frail. They, they hear it on the news all the time in terms of their population being most at risk. And, you know, the CDC recently saying stay at home uh, specifically to seniors. So it's just really important that any messaging and, and any communication that we're just keeping that in mind. And I know that we're an industry that is called to care and that's why we're here in this industry and that's why we do what we do. Um, you know, many of you that might be department heads or EDs or regionals, uh, you know, you, you may be delivering meals to apartments right now, you know, during this crisis. And so it, it really is important to just keep that in mind as you're communicating with your existing lead base, as well as your messaging out to new prospects. So we'll talk about the communication and message to prospects. We'll talk about, you know, how we engage and deliver those messages, as well as providing relevant content to your audience, which is always crucial, maintaining an increasing brand awareness, and then also strong non-event based calls to action. And so, you know, we've spoken to a lot of clients over the last few weeks. And of course, you know, everyone is changing their strategies in terms of call to action. And the good news is there are a lot of non-event based call to actions that work well. And we'll be talking about those today. And then, of course, implementing those lead generation strategies. So let's talk about the first one, communication and messaging. So again, I want to draw your attention to the image here and thinking about as you're talking with, again, whether it be your existing lead base and, and, and you know, for those of you that are not at the community sales uh, level, you know, your supporting levels, regional home office folks, EDs, you know, sales managers, it's important to keep this in mind for your salespeople because it's it's such a crucial time for this demographic, for, for these seniors, you know, some of them have lived through the depression, they've lived through polio, through smallpox, all of these things that not everyone has. And so it's very uh, upsetting and very uh, anxiety provoking for all of us, but particularly for this population. And of course, for their adult children who may not be able to go and visit them, they're, they're maybe not local, you know, there are just so many, uh, variables that we need to keep in mind here from an emotional perspective. And so I think, you know, maintaining the authenticity, you know, just simply asking folks, how are they doing? Um, being sincere, you know, helping them see that you understand and, and we're all in this together, right? Um, also being inquisitive. So, you know, what are they most concerned about? Take that opportunity to learn more about what those challenges are, whether it's the adult child or the senior, it'd be very interesting for you to identify what they're going through and then from there be able to be a resource. Um, you know, when we think about earthquakes or blizzards or, or any of these other crises that we find ourselves in, uh, we're oftentimes reaching out to the senior population and, and to the adult child to say, what can we do? How can we be supportive? And this is no different. Again, we have to go about it a little differently, but you know, we can still drop a meal off from our dining room 
to the front porch of a senior's home who may be struggling to get out to the grocery store and may not have, you know, uh, family or friends that are close by. So, you know, it's really no different than being a resource uh, in times like, you know, uh, blizzards or uh, earthquakes. So just keep those things in mind. You may just have to do it a little differently. That's really a good point um, because I think now, you know, people are more available. They're home. They're going to answer their phone. You're going to get to have, you know, conversations. And I think people probably, you know, feel very isolated. So, you know, where before maybe your call, uh, you know, connect rate was a bit lower, uh, you know, everyone's available. <laughs> so I, I think it is a great time just to really build those relationships and, you know, focus less on the quality, the quantity of activities and really focus on, you know, building relationships and cultivating those and nurturing them. And, you know, I, I love all of those those ideas um, because I think this is the time to switch our messaging from being salesy to being super empathetic, uh, you know, being seen as a, a local resource. You know, do you know which markets have senior hours? Do you know what restaurants are de delivering? Uh, you know, I think all of those, um, the more that you you know those things and are communicating those things and sending out links to local updates, um, I think when this passes and it will pass, um, you know the people that are over communicating right now and over caring. This is like a bank of goodwill that we have a chance to um, to build on. So I think the communication strategy is is super interesting. So thanks thanks for bringing that up, Val. Yeah, that's a great point, Debbie. And a couple of things that you mentioned you know isolation and so as an industry we often talk about this right where folks we know are isolating it's one of the things that we talk about when we're um, showing the great um, you know activity programs that we have and the benefits of living in senior living and you know while we're all practicing social distancing right now and we're all struggling in our own ways and our our schedules have been disrupted and our kids are homeschooling and all of these things um, keep in mind that a lot of that is what our seniors who live home alone are feeling every single day when it comes to their isolation. They're not seeing their friends. Many of their friends may have passed away. Their families are busy. They're not local. Their seniors not connected from a technology perspective to be able to tune in and see, uh, you know, things on social media or FaceTime or, you know, so it's just something that for us, as we take a step back and as we're getting through this pandemic, for us to also think about what that feels like for that senior who lives this, you know, life of isolation every single day. So, you know, it's just, I think, something for us, again, being in an industry that's, uh, you know, called to care, to take a step back and think about the things that we're feeling right now are, unfortunately, uh, very typical feelings for many seniors that are, are home and, and isolating. All right, so the next thing we want to talk about is increasing brand awareness. And so, you know, again, this is always something top of mind uh, for us as sales and marketing professionals. But, you know, as Debbie just mentioned, it really is, um, you know, banking some goodwill with folks as you are over communicating and showing that, you know, you care about them. And, and this is not about, you know, hurry up and get in here and tour, right? Because we've only got one apartment left and we've got three other people that want it. I mean, at the end of the day, we're still going to, drive sales and we're still going to do our marketing but this is definitely an opportunity for us to just showcase your brand showcase the culture and really show your prospects who you are and what you're all about and and i think as an industry we also have an opportunity to show that senior living is resilient and and we are dependable and you know i was talking with a, a client last week and we were talking about how you know, we have full dining kitchens, we have, you know, Cisco or Unidyne, these food trucks that come and deliver massive amounts of food to our large freezers. And so our residents and senior living, although they're having their meals in their apartments and they're isolated from that social dining setting, it's temporary and, and they know where their next meal is going to come from. Same thing with their medications, you know, they're being delivered, they're still there, there's not a shortage of their medications. Uh, versus that senior that's at home or that adult child who's not able to to get to their loved one and make sure that they have everything that they need. So, you know, again, it's a time where senior living can really show the value 
um, in what we do and how we operate and that we're equipped to manage things like this, even though none of us have ever had to manage something quite like this. Um, senior living is resilient and, and it's our opportunity as an industry to show uh, everyone that. So we wanna talk a little bit about various communication platform options. Um, these are things that you know, Leading Response does for our clients on a regular basis, um, but these are also things that you could easily incorporate. Um, and these are things that can help manage your existing lead base, so staying connected and cultivating and nurturing those existing leads, but also just as important is driving new leads. Because we all know that, you know, the, the pipeline is going to shrink. We're not going to be able to meet our occupancy and revenue goals. And we all know, unfortunately, the outcomes of not being able to do that, right? And so we've just got to be able to continue to stay focused. And again, do things a little differently, but as sales and marketing professionals, we have to continue to move forward and drive the needle. And so a couple of things that we'll talk about today in terms of platforms is, you know, webinar. So that's something that, you know, all of us on the call are, of course, are likely more familiar with than some of our prospects, especially the more senior prospects. But there are also uh, many platforms. We we have one at Leading Response that we use um, that's very user friendly. And so, you know, I, I can't encourage you enough to utilize the webinars and, and utilize uh, the video portions of webinars to be able to communicate um, to your audience uh, where you can't do marketing events face to face and you can't do. Um, you know, one-on-one -on -one face to face tours in most instances, um, except for maybe, you know, some acute situations. And then video messaging is another one that, you know, for any of us that have a smartphone, it's easy to just take a, a, a quick one minute. I know it may feel awkward to many of us, but, you know, taking a quick one minute video and it's a personal message and you're sending that off, you can send it in many different ways. You can text it, you can email it. Um, you know, to that adult child. There are many seniors that have smartphones as well. And so, you know, it's just another opportunity to stay connected with your prospects. Social media, we'll talk a lot about. That's certainly an area that, um, you know, we all have available to us. And again, we need to keep in mind our audience. Um, not everyone, uh, you know, it, that is an older adult uses social media, but You'll be surprised by some of the numbers that you'll see. Um, and again, this is very typical for us uh, in our consumer segments, all being 55 and older. And I think we see that more and more as we all tend to use social media more. And then direct mail, phone and email, you'll see I have an exclamation point after all of these. And that's really just to recognize that these are still great vehicles to connect with our consumers. And again, it, it has to tie to the right message and it has to be relevant content. And, and I will say direct mail certainly does get a bad rap. I know before I started at Leading Response five years ago, I was of the thought of likely many of you uh, today that you know direct mail is expensive and no one reads their mail anymore and we get you know poor responses and, and results. And I can tell you that that is absolutely not the case uh, when you do it correctly. And when I say correctly, and I, again, I've learned this uh, in the last five years as well, it's using you know, consumer-based data. It's using a uh, strong call to actions. It's understanding that although we may not necessarily look as closely at our mail as we used to before social media, uh, we do still have a target audience that does. And to Debbie's point earlier, people are home now. And so there's even more of an opportunity to be able to take a few minutes and go through your mail versus it may be piling up for days uh, if you're that adult child or for the senior, they really look forward to getting the mail. So, you know, I can't preface enough for your existing lead base, you know, personal note cards, just getting that message out to them. Um, if you know anything about that particular prospect that you know is of interest to them, you know, museums or animals, something like that. I mean, you could easily just print something off in the office and stick a picture of a cute little puppy in an envelope and send it off to them. And that may seem silly, um, but again, those are all touch points that your existing leads are going to appreciate because it's thoughtful, it's authentic. And to Debbie's point earlier, it, it helps people connect with you and, and know that you're thinking of them. 
and like then getting the mail is like the highlight of my day now, Val. It's like, woohoo, gonna go get the mail, and I'm spending a lot more time. Get excited when I get a little J Jill in my mail. So, <laughs> you know, it, it's different, right? We have a little bit more of a, you know, a captive audience, and maybe there are fewer distractions, and so you know, something like that, you know, may may have a a better ROI than in our normal busy busyness. Right, right. And direct mail is also still a great way to promote some of the other things you're doing. So, for example, you know, you may be using it in the past to promote a marketing event, but now you're going to use it to promote a webinar. And you might be offering some downloadable content on your website, like a care assessment tool or a financial assessment. Um, you want to be able to drive them to your site and you can use direct mail to do that. I mean, you can use vanity URLs that are easy for people to type into their browser. Um, so there are definitely different ways to do that. And, you know, we're leading response is here to help you. We are partnered with you in this. This is what we do. And so please, you know, you'll have my contact information at the end of this, but um, questions, anything that we can do to help support you and ultimately help support your, uh, your prospects, uh, we're, we're happy to do. So phone and email, and again, we'll talk a little bit more about that, but also delivery services. And some of you do this already, but, and, and you know, again, recognizing the situation that we're in right now, it's certainly not business as usual, but I don't know about all of you. I still see the Amazon truck coming by my house regularly. Uh, you know, there, there may be some delays. Uh, restaurants are still open for delivery and takeout. And so, you know, again, keeping that in mind when you're talking to your prospects, and just getting creative and thinking outside the box uh, so that you can still support them and again still be seen as um, you know that community partner that uh, really does genuinely care and, and wants to help. So let's talk a little bit more about webinars. So you know again it's a great alternative to face-to-face -face events. There are several platforms out there now um, that are very easy to use for people that are new to webinars and that's certainly something that we need to recognize uh, given our prospects. Um, it also allows you for a broader reach. So if you think about webinars versus your face-to-face uh, -face marketing events, whether they're held off-site at a you know local venue or on-site, typically the consumer behaviors tell us that folks won't drive more than 15 or 20 minutes to, an, to attend an event like that. When you're doing a webinar, you can broaden that reach, you know, outside of your PMA or your primary market area. Um, and, and it gives you an opportunity to increase your lead base um, through your new leads, but it does it in a way that is convenient for that consumer as well, particularly since, um, you know, people, of course, don't want to come out right now. They're being told not to come out. And of course, more so in some areas of the country than others. And webinars can drive new prospects. So as I just mentioned before, whether it be direct mail or your uh, digital efforts, you know, that webinars in itself are a call to action. And again, given the uh, the environment right now, people are, uh, and when I say people, I mean consumers, are, are hungry for the information just like they have before. They more now more than ever want to stay connected. You know, I think we're all watching the news more frequently, listening to news radio and just trying to stay as informed as possible. And so webinars are a great platform to do that. And again, it allows you that face to face so that you can connect with your audience, even though you're not seeing them, um, they're seeing you. Also, uh, a great way to provide that education and information that you would have been doing through other uh, forms of communication, whether that be, you know, one on one with families touring in the community or at a larger group setting like a marketing event. And then, of course, the Q&A session is, uh, you know, equally important here to recognize. And, and you'll notice, uh, you know, you've got the chat box there so you can ask any questions. It will be the same if you're the presenter on a webinar and you've got, you know, your adult children and uh, senior prospects that are typing in questions. There are just many different options. So I, I really uh, I, I really strongly recommend uh, trying the webinars. If you haven't, again, we're here to help you. We have our own platform, but you can certainly use any of the other platforms out there as well. A video messaging and content. So again, you know, some of these tools are literally just at our fingertips, right? For many of us, uh, if not all of us that have uh, smartphones. And so being able to use whether it's a uh, a platform that is specific for video messaging or just being able to send a quick video that you just took on your phone off to a prospect. 
make it personal, um, you know, showcasing an area of your community. And so, you know, uh, another client I was speaking to uh, a week or so ago was concerned because uh, their salespeople at the community level were being pulled into a significant amount of operational um, uh, challenges and rightfully so because it was all hands on deck. Um, but at the same time, you know, the EDs, the sales managers were trying to allow the sales and marketing folks to kind of, you know, stay hidden, right? And, and be able to just stay focused on the sales and marketing. And what they found, one of the clients that we were talking to uh, found that they were able to essentially do both. So what they did with their sales and marketing team members was, you know, yes, you're going to be helping by delivering meals or, you know, vacuuming the private dining room or whatever it might be. But take your smartphones with you and capture those moments that happen in senior living that we all know and love because we see them all the time but our prospects don't always see them. And so the last thing you want is for your prospects to be wondering what's happening at that senior living community down the place that down the street that um, has placed everyone on, uh, you know, I hate to use the word lockdown, but people say that, right? They think that, they think, my gosh, you know, I, I wouldn't be able to leave if I was there. If I was a family member, I wouldn't be able to go visit. And they wonder what's happening in inside the communities, right? As we're, um, uh, you know, not able to go about our business. And so it's so important to be able to showcase that so many great things are happening. I mean, I'm sure we've all seen it on social. I'll share some pictures with you here in a few minutes, but, um, you know, they're having a great time. And, and we know that in senior living, but it's so important to be able to share that. And so, you know, I say that and just make sure that you have the, the permission, of course, you've got your waiver signed for the residents uh, in, in order to, to share that kind of information. But whether it be Facebook Live or video messaging, you know, have your sales and marketing folks walk around and as they're helping uh, with whatever it is that you, you need their help with, they're also capturing those moments and being able to share that, uh, that great story. And then also doing things like interviewing staff members. Again, this is a great opportunity to do a quick, you know, what we often call in this industry a 30 second commercial, right? So for those of you, you know, when you're touring people around, you would normally uh, engage with a few associates along the way and they would give their 30 second commercial of why they're working there and what they most love about working with this population. And so again, capture that on video. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's just another opportunity to engage with your prospects and show them, you know, the caregivers that are showing up every single day when they are scared with their kids home from school and the challenges that they're facing, they're showing up and they're providing that care to those, those seniors. Resident testimonials, same thing here. You know, oftentimes we do this in various ways, uh, but you utilize the option to do a, a quick video. I'm sure there are a few residents within every community that would be more than happy to uh, be on video for, you know, 60 seconds. Use it to provide updates on COVID-19 efforts. Again, you know, we need to be able to show that we are resilient as an industry and being able to provide those small bits of information to our uh, prospects helps them see that although none of us could have fully prepared for what we're dealing with, the senior living industry is prepared. There are plans in place. There are things that we know we need to do to keep our seniors, our residents, our families, our staff safe and healthy. And then again, allow it as a uh, platform for uh, you know, frequently asked questions, being able to provide some information to folks um, you know, based on questions that you're hearing from prospects that you're talking to. So getting into uh, more of the digital marketing and social media, um, only 39% of people age 55 and older do not use some form of social media. So that may surprise some of you, uh, but you know, what about the other 61%, right? So although you may not be able to uh, reach all of your prospects, it is still a great way to connect. Let's talk a little bit more about that. Social media campaigns, um, again, you know, we were just talking about some content. So uploading those videos, utilizing things like Facebook Live. And, and for many of us, you know, if you've never used Facebook Live, it's easy enough to do it. So just educate yourself on that and then be able to do that uh, within your communities. And again, be able to, uh, you know, offer that content to your followers on Facebook. And we see it all the time, you know, videos that go viral and, 
you know, these great human interest stories. And I don't know about everybody else, but I know I could use as many as possible of those great human interest stories uh, in this environment. So again, you know, think about your smartphone and what you can do to uh, help promote what's happening inside your communities to, uh, to show the, the rest of the world. Facebook surveys and polls. So this is also something that's helpful, you know, given this time where more people are at home, they have more opportunity to do things like surveys, um, whether it be Facebook or you're using direct mail campaigns to do surveys or even phone surveys, um, you know, asking a few key questions uh, will help you identify what people need and what their what their feelings are about this situation. And again, that kind of information is going to help you moving forward with other marketing strategies and call to actions. And keeping it light and simple, you know, daily posts with trivia questions, incorporate your activities director in these things, um, you know, help people stay connected to you. You'd be surprised how many people will come back to your page day after day because, you know, they, they want to see what's happening in the community today, or they really like the post they saw from you last week. And so now they're, you know, paying closer attention to what you're posting in the future. And then posting of pictures that share your culture. And again, this is another great opportunity given this environment to help people feel and know and see that we understand what they're going through. And this is what we're doing in our senior living communities to help people through this. Also educational posts. Again, you know, although we're dealing with this pandemic, there are still so many people out there that need this information that had been thinking about senior living for themselves or a loved one. And then of course, you know, like the rest of us had to take a step back and think, oh my gosh, what do I need to do now because of this pandemic? So don't lose the momentum with those folks, whether those be existing prospects in your lead base or new prospects, there is still a great need for education and information. And my recommendation here with social media would be to keep it short and sweet. You know, this is not uh, a webinar setting where you would want to give much more information and open it up for Q&A. This is an opportunity for you to, again, use some of your downloadable content if you have that, uh, call attention to, um, you know, the uh, financial um, uh, tools that you have available for folks, uh, and, but do it in a way that you keep the messaging focused on what we're dealing with today because the last thing you wanna do is act as though it's just business as usual and have a call to action out there that says, you know, come in and tour and have dinner in our beautiful community dining room. I mean, we just, we have to pause those types of messages for now because unfortunately that's not the situation we're in today. And we don't want the prospects feeling like they don't understand me. Why would they ask me to come in and tour when the CDC is telling me to stay home and, and stay safe? So. You, know, you have to keep that in mind in terms of your messaging, um, given the situation. Here are a few of the uh, social media pictures that I've seen on some of my friends' uh, profiles. I'm sure some of you have seen these as well. And so again, it's just a great way to keep things light and showcase what you're doing in your communities and very easy to do, whether it's your sales and marketing, uh, folks at the community level or activity directors, you know, you, you all have Facebook pages and, and Facebook certainly being one, uh, you know, one outlet for social media, but it's just a great way to be able to uh, show what you're doing. I love the one on the right, which is the happy hour. Uh, normally people would come down to the dining room for that, but in this case, they brought a traveling cart around and of course, uh, you know, uh, just allowed folks to stay in their room and enjoy a happy hour. And again, some pictures many of you have probably seen and, and hopefully doing yourselves. So on the left, you know, they're still doing their bingo, but they're just doing it uh, in their, their doorway, quite frankly, instead of, uh, you know, hosting it in the, the community room. And we've seen a lot of these uh, that you're seeing on the right side, whether it be a sign that says, you know, I'm 102 today or family members that are outside of the community uh, looking through a window, being able to communicate with their loved one in the absence of being able to actually come into the community. So again, these are all great human interest, feel good visuals that you know we all love to see, uh, but make sure that you're getting these in front of your prospects. This, this costs you nothing to do. 
Uh, digital campaign marketing. So these are some of the things that Leading Response has been doing, you know, certainly outside of COVID-19, but these are some things that you may want to be considering um, to continue to drive lead generation. So, you know, being a Facebook marketing partner, Leading Response has the ability to uh, target very specific audiences um, beyond, you know, just your basic targeting that uh, many of your uh, in-house marketing teams are able to do. Um, and that's really just because of the volume of digital marketing that we do with Facebook that we're able to have uh, this benefit. Hey, Val, can you uh, tell us more about that? Is it that you're able to um, analyze the, the current audience that, that's on a particular community or um, Facebook and create uh, look-alike audiences and get more targeted or I'd love to learn a little bit more about you know what that looks like I know some people have even uh, indicated that there's a way to kind of upload your you know resident rent roll and kind of look at demographics and try to go out and find more prospects like um, those that you know are similar similar to those that have chosen your community or your brand mm -hmm based on either the, pros the the resident or the influencer. So I'd love to learn a little bit more about what that means. Yes, yeah, so that's exactly right, Debbie. And that's that kind of first bullet there of exclusive targeting. And so, you know, whether that be taking your existing lead base or rent roll and uh, sending that to us, we can then take a look at, you know, the profile of those folks and then the lookalike audiences. And as I'm sure many people uh, in the direct marketing space have uh, seen recently, you know, the Facebook is always changing and they're, they're having to, you know, make changes to the way that, you um, uh, providers like Leading Response and all of you that are doing Facebook campaigns are, are interacting with them and targeting, uh, you know, Facebook members. And so we do take a lot of that information behind the scenes and we're able to then uh, utilize that information to then get that same type of profile. And then, of course, we look at, you know, the, the geography and, and uh, many other demographics as well. So, um, it's definitely a great way to target. Uh, also, direct mail, again, is still going to be a great way to target because you can still get more demographic data based on the physical address, the property, you know, mailing address of those folks like ailment data and familial connections. And so um, the digital targeting is great. It's come a long way, but, you know, it's still something where you need to take a step back and consider omni-channel approach. So you should be doing you know, some of direct mail and some of digital campaign marketing. And again, you know, today's environment, we have to change up the call to action and that's okay. That's going to be temporary. But I think one of the things that is going to uh, come out of this pandemic is that we're going to see as an industry that the 55 plus consumer segment that we target wants to communicate with us in many different ways. And, and we as an industry have almost always communicated with them in, in very specific ways. And so this is making us as an industry kind of, you know, come outside of our comfort zone. Uh, but these are tools that are available and have been available. And so, um, you know, we're happy to provide more information. There's probably a few educational webinars we could do on just this kind of content, but um, it, it is out there and available. And, and I strongly recommend that you really approach your marketing strategies if you're, if you're not already, um, you know, with the omni-channel, uh, you know, mindset. Uh, this is just some more information on digital targeting. So really uh, just kind of reviewing here what we were just talking about. So, um, we can also look at things like interest based. Uh, so looking at more of the retirement communities, uh, lifestyle versus need. So for those of you that are operating the new, you know, 55 plus active adult segment or the, uh, you know, traditional IL or have that that service line uh, within your portfolios. These are great ways to be able to target and then also retarget. And, and when we talk about retarget, you can do that through, uh, you know, digital banner ads, some of the traditional digital retargeting that we are all familiar with, but also through um, uh, direct mail. So there's actually a way that you can uh, capture the visitors on your website who have not uh, converted, meaning that they haven't filled out a contact form. Uh, and from there, they uh, can then receive something in the mail. And so you're basically connecting with them digitally because you've driven them to your website through, you know, PPC or other uh, means of digital advertising. And for whatever reason, they're not taking action. So now we can then uh, send them a direct mail piece and we can actually filter their demographics. 
meaning that uh, you're only going to be sending a retargeting message to those that meet your qualifications. So we can do the demographic uh, appending of age, income, finances, uh, beyond just income, you know, your income producing assets, and then also uh, looking at, of course, the geography. So we can see how close they are to your community um, and send them a direct mail piece. And of course, it can vary in terms of the call to action. Yeah, I think that's really interesting. I know that there's always that fine line between like stalking and <laughs> informing. Um, but, you know, if people have high enough intent to come to your website, uh, but for whatever reason, they don't take an action. Um, it certainly makes sense that for those that are qualified, meaning that they match your demographics, they're, they're location specific, you know, sending them out something that doesn't say, I know you were on my website, <laughs> but something that's very, you know, warm and generic and, um, you know, a, a message that's going to resonate, uh, I think, reaches people in a different way. Because I think that's what keeps us all up at night. It's not... It's the traffic that, you know, you go to your Google Analytics and you see, gosh, I've got 5,000 visitors, you know, but I got 25, you know, form fills. Uh, you know, what happened to the rest? How do I, um, you know, how do I reconnect with them? And so you can do it socially through Facebook. You can do it um, through direct mail. And I think we have to operate on on all of these channels. And direct mail with people being at home, I think, is is a more interesting than maybe it was a couple of weeks ago. Uh, but even looking at landing pages, like so if you have landing pages for people to download your brochure or a financial solutions guide or a family decision guide or any of your content, you know, sometimes you can see that, you know, 1,700 people had enough intent to get to that landing page, but maybe only a couple hundred filled it out. Well, wouldn't you want to go get the other 1,500 that didn't fill it out? But you know that they were interested, for instance, in getting your brochure or in that financial solutions guide and be able to have a custom image that would be relevant to them. So I think there's lots we can do with this. I think we have to be um, you know, sensitive to the messaging, right? Agreed, absolutely. And, and people, because of the digital retargeting, you know, we're also accustomed as consumers to you know, doing some research, let's say if you're looking to purchase a new car and so you've maybe gone on four or five different car websites and now you're checking your email and you're seeing on that right rail, you know, a, a digital banner ad that is showing, you know, one of those uh, dealerships that you were, uh, you know, early on earlier in the day. Um, so it's really no different than that. It's just uh, retargeting them via direct mail. And it's just a different way to connect with them, knowing that they were connecting with you digitally. But now you want to put something in their mailbox so that they have that tangible and there's that brand recognition. And then the messaging is really, uh, it can be very generic and it can be very specific because you can actually identify you know, that IP address uh, activity on your website. So for example, I'm sure many, if not all of us have a COVID-19 message on our website. And so if you have traffic that is going to that landing page, that's basically saying, tell me more about what your policies are for COVID-19 or how you're managing in your community, you can be sending a direct mail piece to them within a few days of them being on that landing page um, that's gonna speak to what you're doing as an organization to help keep uh, you know, folks safe and, and healthy. And so you really can get very specific with that. And it also can help you identify what kind of traffic is coming to your site. So if, you know, to your point, Debbie, if you have a large number of unique visitors that your Google Analytics is telling you, but then you're seeing very few conversions, it could be that a large majority of that traffic is you know, not qualified financially. And, and so then maybe you're changing up your keywords or the different strategies that you're uh, employing at a, you know, the top of the funnel with your digital efforts. So it's also very uh, interesting from an analytics perspective as well, just for your overall uh, digital strategies. 24-7 uh, campaign management. So these are just some of the tools that we use for our clients that are all web-based. They're all behind the scenes in terms of being able to show you, and this would be for a new lead generation, where you're able to see demographics of folks that are going to be attending your webinar, for example, if you're going to be hosting a webinar in lieu of a marketing event, um, being able to send uh, text messages and reminders and uh, live 
call center folks that can remind people about upcoming campaigns or whatever it might be that you're doing. Um, we have all of those tools behind the scenes and a lot of it, again, is tied back to the demographics, which is great for our uh, our industry because as many of us know, you know, we don't typically get an opportunity until folks show up to our marketing events or uh, walk in the door to really get a sense of who they are demographically. And of course, you still have to do your uh, due diligence in terms of discovery and identifying what their situation is, um, but it's great information uh, from a sales strategy perspective to be able to have this before you're even picking up the phone talking to these people or meeting them at a you know a webinar or you know when uh, this pandemic passes to be able to uh, you know meet them face to face at events and in uh, on your community uh, tour a couple things uh, about direct mail so again still a great option for this audience as we mentioned people are at home more reviewing their mail um, incorporate consumer behavior data. So again, if some of you have felt like direct mail is not working for us, so we've either cut our budget for direct mail or we're just not even doing it anymore, um, I urge you to revisit that, but do it a little differently than you had been doing it before. And again, we're here to help you. We've got a lot of content uh, available on this um, that, that can help you uh, with, with your direct mail efforts. A resident testimonial, staff testimonials, you know, we have a fair amount of clients coming to us in the last few weeks, given the situation, and they're looking to uh, use direct mail as a way to uh, recruit new staff. And you know, as we know in senior living, staffing has been an issue for many years uh, and continues to be. And and you know, keep in mind that there are so many people, and I'm sure we're all thinking about this. There are so many people that have been negatively impacted. You know, the, the restaurant industry, um, people that just have abruptly lost their job. And you know, wouldn't it be great if we could hire folks and get them through, uh, you know, caregiver training, whether it's our own internal organic training or you know the certified programs that are out there? Because we all know, working in this industry, that it's just such a great industry to work in, and it would be such a wonderful thing if we can help, you know, take such an awful situation. And and do our part to make it better, you know. So so many people that are out of work right now that would make a great caregiver or a dining room manager or something like that. Of course, it has to make sense. You know, we, we can't just go hire folks that you know don't have the heart. Um, we know that we hire for heart and train to skill in this industry. So it's something to keep in mind. And again, it also shows that senior living is resilient, and, and we are still hiring, and we do still need great staff members. And then using direct mail to drive new prospect to webinars or, or scheduled phone appointments. We do a lot of that for our clients as well. Um, and then also to showcase that we are here for you. We are your local community. We are your neighbor. And so if you need something, whether it be a meal from our dining room or, you know, some some item that we can order from you from Amazon or we have and we can drop it off to you, you know, in, of course, a, a safe way from a social distancing perspective. You know, we want to be able to do that for you. So, you know, use the, the opportunity to get that message out to folks. Uh, this is just a little bit more about that direct mail uh, IP append or retargeting program that we were just talking about. So essentially the way this works is that your, your potential lead or prospect hits your website um, through typically your other digital efforts to drive them there. They leave without requesting information. What we do is match their IP address with their home mailing address. And then that information is run through uh, demographic filters to qualify the lead. So essentially you determine what a qualified lead is for your community. And from there, those that meet that qualification would receive uh, mail within 48 to 72 hours. And it's gonna have your brand recognition. And again, it can be very specific call to actions based on that user's uh, activity on your website be very generic so again that's something that is out there and available uh, so please again let us know if you need help with us uh, with this uh, we're, we're here to help you uh, old-fashioned telephone so you know again this is something that we just really need to keep in mind you know our, our phones still work and, and people are home and so you know take the opportunity again to be uh, authentic and reach out to folks. Um, you know, have a strategy before you call them, certainly, just like you would with any lead before you pick up the phone, um, scheduling a next step before you're ending the call. And keep in mind that, especially if it's the senior that you're reaching out to, 
You might be the only person that they speak to that day. You might be the only person that asks them, how are they handling this pandemic? Offer to FaceTime with them if they have a smartphone or, or to text. Also the three-way calling, if you have you know, family members that don't live close by, how great would that be for you to be able to connect that adult child and senior on a call with you so, you so you can talk about some of the things that you had just been talking about weeks ago before all of this happened. They're gonna remember that and know that you went out of your way to do that. Again, video sharing via text or email, great way to uh, use the phone for that, smartphone, of course. Um, and then also conducting a brief survey. And this just doesn't have to be uh, you know, anything involved. This could be you're reaching out to your lead-based folks and you're gonna ask them three questions. And then you're keeping track of the answers of those questions. And again, that, that kind of information can inform your marketing strategies on what you need to do. What, what is your lead-based feeling? What kind of email messages? What kind of content should you be putting in front of them based on the feedback that they provided you? So in summary, you know, continuing to market during COVID-19 is crucial. You need to make sure that you're maintaining and increasing your brand awareness. It allows you to stay connected to your prospects. It provides your audience with a resource highlights your brand's true culture, showcases our industry's resilience, and quite frankly, it's the right thing to do. Here is uh, my contact information. And so if anyone has any questions, we are always here as a resource and happy to help out. Um, Debbie, uh, anything you wanted to add before we open it up to Q&A? Uh, no, I thought those were great, um, really wonderful suggestions. And um, I guess just a couple of things, just to let everybody know. Number one is that we're working on a uh, COVID-19 resource page, which will be on our website. And there's like 30 or 40 different pieces of information for providers. And it's everything from sales and marketing topics to communication with residents and families and staff. And some of those are in Spanish as well as English. So we're just trying to um, kind of curate all of the best information out there. So you don't have to go to, you know, six different websites to, to get all of the resources that you need. We'll have this, we'll have this webinar and other webinars, downloadable posters. Um, so we are working on that. Um, and if there's, you know, any way that we can support, um, you, you know, we do have, you know, blog writers that are, you know, focused entirely on creating content. So if there's any way that we can support, um, you know, beyond what a leading response does, uh, you know, we, we are here as well. And we do have some questions coming in. So uh, question number one, um, on the phone polls, uh, what do you recommend asking prospects? Like what are some of the, the topics that, that you would um, recommend? Sure, yeah, great question. Um, and again, you know, the key to surveys, right, whether they be mail or uh, electronic surveys or, you know, phone surveys, which, you know, oftentimes don't happen much anymore. But again, great opportunity given the situation we're in. So I, I would say keep it to, you know, three, if you can, three pointed questions. Um, I wouldn't go more than five max. Um, and really try to keep them somewhat open-ended so that you can get as much information because that's really the goal of these surveys, right, is to be able to capture as much information as you can. So if you think of it as kind of discovery when you're open, asking those open-ended questions. So I would ask things like, how are you managing? How are you feeling during this pandemic? Um, you know, what does it mean to you to not be able to connect or see your loved ones? And, and you'll get a lot of information from asking questions like that. And so, again, you're keeping it relevant because COVID-19 is top of mind for everyone. So the last thing you want to do is ask questions about, you know, what type of meals would you like to see in a senior living community or, uh, you know, what type of apartment style would you like in senior living? And you know, not to say that you can't ask those questions, but you certainly don't want to, as we said before, appear as though you're not aware of the current situation and the challenges that we all face in a day-to-day -day or even hour-to-hour -hour situation right now. So um, you don't have to keep it specific to COVID-19, but we would certainly recommend that you're allowing people to give you an idea of how they're feeling during this type of situation. Um, and then also asking things about, 
you know, do they have the means to go out to the grocery store? Do they have the ability to get what they need to be able to, you know, shelter in place and be able to isolate in their homes? Um, you know, some of these folks may have caregivers that came three times a week and they're not able to come anymore for various reasons. And so um, I would definitely be mindful of the questions you ask, keep them short, keep them relevant. And, and again, strategize before you pick up the phone and start making these calls, you know, as a team, whether it be your home office marketing team or uh, your, your department head team, throw around a couple of questions and, and um, you know, think about it again from, you know, your perspective of what would you want to be asked if you were an adult child or a senior in this situation in this time? Yeah, I agree. I think it's about, you know, what do you need and how can we help and what kind of support um, and do you have a support system? Um, you know, I think that those are great questions um, that will start building that that camaraderie. We also had a question about webinar topics. So one of the questions is um, for startup or new construction, um, what webinar topics would you recommend? And I, I, I would think that people also just in general as an operating community, you know, you've done yeah, I think hundreds of thousands of, <laughs> of um, you know, in-person events. Now that we're moving to a kind of that virtual event mode, um, what topics typically resonate um, or are there specific topics that we should focus on um, at this point? Sure, great question. Um, and, and the nice thing about the webinar is because you really are still sharing the same content you would at a face-to-face -face marketing event, you're just using a different platform if you think about it that way, um, you can still incorporate some of the strong topics and call to actions that people need to know about in order to educate themselves about senior living. And again, keeping it relevant uh, so that we're recognizing the situation uh, that we're in right now, being able to have topics that are uh, relevant to how do you keep your loved one safe and healthy during COVID-19. And it can be hosted by your senior living community, but it's going to provide that education and information to that adult child or to that senior who's looking for information. I mean, when you think about all of us on uh, these types of webinars, we're hungry for what can we do to still market and, and sell during this pandemic? And how do we continue to move forward and support one another and all the things that we're doing as an industry? It's the same type of thing for the consumer. You want to be able to provide that education and provide those uh, you know bits of content that they can have as a takeaway after that webinar. So just like you would pass them you know, some information as they're walking out the door from your marketing event. Again, whether that be a financial worksheet or information on you know, VA aid and attendance benefits or uh, whatever it might be, um, provide that information to them. You're just gonna be doing it virtually. And so definitely a topic around how to keep your uh, yourselves and your loved ones safe. And, and there, I've seen many, um, uh, bits of content out there and, and Senior Living Smart, if they don't have something developed already, it sounds like Debbie, you folks are working on that. Um, so, you know, I, I would say there's no lack of resources for that type of thing and, and make it your own, you know, make it a one page where you're uh, branding it and it's your information out to your, uh, your target audience. And then some of the other topics are, you know, people are concerned about finances. And so, you know, the other nice thing about webinars, just like you can do with marketing events is you can have a co-presenter so you can have your local uh, estate planner or financial advisor, uh, you know, there and, and do the webinar with you. And then they're able to answer some of those questions that people might have around volatility of the market. And, and do I, you know, change up my financial strategy? What do I do? I mean, you know, finances are always a big uh, top of mind question for, for all of us. And so being able to incorporate that as a topic, people always want to learn more about finances and how to cover the cost of senior living, but also given this pandemic, how do I protect myself financially? So different topics like that that you would normally have uh, with your traditional marketing events, but just keep in mind that you have to have them be relevant to, unfortunately, the, the yeah. conversation. I know I keep harping on that, but that is, you know, why we're all listening in today and, and what we're all kind of pivoting to, to make sure that we're just managing through and, and we're all going to come out of this, uh, you know, stronger. I, I truly believe that as an industry, we're going to come out of this um, very resilient and we're going to, we're going to be seen um, by, by consumers as 
a tried and true solution that didn't have to worry about where that next meal was coming from or whether mom or dad were going to have their medications available to them. Thanks, Val. Yeah, and if you need help with um, speakers, I mean, this is, first of all, an opportunity for you to present yourself as the trusted advisor. So leveraging, you know, people that are already in your organization, you know, you are um, head of uh, health and well-being, can do um, all kinds of topics about staying well and, um, uh, you know, all the healthy habits and precautions. You can have your head of facilities really talking about, um, you know, cleaning protocols and disinfecting protocols, you know, things that don't seem really interesting. But when people are sitting home alone and scared, they're kind of looking for that. Or your head of dining could do something on uh, tips for safe shopping. Um, you know, I was at the grocery store today and people were bringing in their their reusable bags from home and they were being turned away because they don't want anyone bringing that into the store and they're not allowing that. So, you know, a lot of, there's a lot of just good best practices that you can use this opportunity to position yourself as that, um, as that local resource, or you can also have create panels with a financial advisor or a veterans benefit specialist, um, or we have access to a wonderful geriatric nurse um, and we have a, you know, other speakers kind of in our network that we can help you with if you also want to be supported with an outside speaker. Um, so we have a, a question about you know, what special advice is there um, for when you actually have residents that, that have tested positive. So there's that immediate kind of image challenge where maybe the community knows that this particular, you know, that there is an outbreak within the building. Um, mm -hmm. any, any kind of thought around, you know, is this a time for, for messaging? What type of messaging and what channels would you recommend? Sure. Well, and first I will say, um, you know, I'm sorry to hear if that is the case, uh, you know, for you specifically. Um, it's it's something that, you know, is all around us, right? And so we're all being affected by it. It can happen anywhere. We're seeing it happen anywhere. And so I think it's certainly something that you need to uh, to get in front of, right? I mean, it, it can happen anywhere. It's not like, you know, you need to feel like, oh gosh, we don't want to be the community that has a black cloud over it because, you know, we, we had someone test positive, whether it be a resident or a staff member, because it's just, it's everywhere. Um, I, I would say certainly you want to connect with your, um, you know, in-house marketing team to make sure that you have messaging out there. Um, we have had a client actually uh, about a week or so ago um, who did have a, a similar instance. Um, the resident actually sadly passed away um, and they had communication uh, very quickly out to not only their you know, existing family members, residents and prospects, but also out to social media. Um, they, were, they were posting essentially letting people know um, how this pandemic had affected them had affected their staff members, the family and, and, and residents, and then also what they did to take action. And so again, it's, you know, it's a horrible situation if you have uh, someone that has tested positive, and of course even worse if they have, uh, you know, passed away from it, but it's an opportunity to be able to let folks know what you're doing as an organization um, to, to ensure the, the safety and the health of, everyone that uh, you know is is in your community and and also you know ha may have visited your community so um, and Debbie I don't know if you've got uh, information you know for yeah. smart but I, it's certainly something I'm happy to uh, share out as well uh, you know but usually that's something you want to have done internally from a messaging perspective and, and you know have it come from the CEO and, and, and really have it be more about, uh, you know, a message out to the masses um, and just really highlight that this has happened and it's hit, it hits close to home for all of us. Yeah, I think people right now are really looking for, you know, honesty, um, transparency um, and, and just over communication. So it's not a time to put your head in the sand and pretend like maybe people won't notice. <laughs> so there will be in this resource section, we have sample letters and media statements. Um, so definitely get those. If you need them quicker, just you know, email uh, me at Senior Living Smart, uh, dhoward at seniorlivingsmart.com. We can send out those templates. 
uh, but definitely be proactive about communicating because uh, unfortunately you know there probably will be more cases so if you don't have a case right now that's wonderful but but prepare the media statements and the letters out to families prepare as though you're going to have it at some point um, hopefully you won't have to use it but you don't want to be scrambling um, in trying to come up with that messaging um, and then the um, also yeah we do have one client that's had good really good luck with Facebook live um, inviting uh, you know families um, you know and and prospects and professionals to kind of come and hear what's going on every day so if they're hearing from you every day and and uh, vitality senior living at 10 o'clock in the morning every ed and sometimes they'll invite um residents as well they're actually broadcasting just to say how they're doing that day what's going on what steps are being taken um, so if they're hearing from you every day, then when they have bad news, you're going to at least have had all of that. We know they were prepared. They know we know what precautions they had taken. And look, this happened anyway. You just don't want to be in a position where the only time they hear from you is bad news, because um, that's that's kind of not where where we want to be. And then I have one last question. Um, aside from, will we be sharing the slides? Yes, we'll be sharing out the, this whole thing and the slides. So you'll get that probably uh, today or tomorrow. Um, in terms of uh, local newspaper ads, display ads, kind of some of the more traditional, um, you know, marketing and advertising, uh, you know, is that relevant at this point? Um, you know, there may be people that are kind of stuck with uh, newspaper contracts and they're trying to figure out how do we change that messaging or how do we use that channel? Um, any recommendations for that? Sure. Yeah. I mean, certainly if you have a contract and, you know, you've spent those dollars already, essentially, um, you do want to be able to, again, provide that relevant content. So, you know, still allows for some brand awareness and brand recognition, um, but just tailor that message again to, you know, what you're doing as an organization, as a community to help people stay, uh, you know, safe and healthy. And depending on, you know, the, the amount of real estate or essentially the size of the ad that you have, um, you know, it could be a great opportunity to provide the, you know, top five tips to stay healthy during COVID-19, you know, something that is educational and informative and, and also catches their attention from a visual because that's a big part of, uh, you know, kind of newspaper advertising. Um, and if you don't have a contract and you're looking at that as a, a mode of communication, you know, again, omni-channel is really where you want to focus. And so you're thinking about every single uh, aspect of advertising and way to communicate with folks. And certainly this consumer segment does still read the newspaper. Um, again, with people having more time at home, you know, they're likely to uh, look at that newspaper more, um, whether it be a printed version that gets uh, dropped at their door or, um, you know, a virtual version. But, you know, the, the downside, unfortunately, to newspaper ads is, you know, one, it's, it's expensive. And two, it's very difficult to capture the ROI. So when you're really trying to look at your marketing dollars and, and is this a viable option and should we continue this or maybe spend more dollars towards this effort, um, unless you have a very strong call to action that has some type of, you know, code that people can provide for you to tie it back to that advertising, it can be difficult from an ROI perspective. Yep, agreed. Well, we've we've had a, a great conversation. Um, I thank everyone for hanging in there. We have um, we have another uh, webinar coming up on Monday uh, at the same time at 1 p.m. Eastern, and it will be the COVID-19 Marketing Summit. And this is going to have perspectives directly from the operators. Um, so VPs of sales and marketing and communication. Um, so I think that will be a great complement uh, to everything that um, Valerie has teed up here. So uh, you'll be getting that as well. Um, and I know we just had a question about uh, how to do virtual tours um, and we'll be covering that, how to do it, what is the technology um, and what are the options. So hopefully we'll see everybody back here uh, Monday at one o'clock. Um, and uh, more to come on this on these marketing topics. We're going to be out here once or twice a week, giving you information, giving you examples, giving you resources. Probably also going to be starting a podcast um, to get some more uh, voices heard, um, so we can support each other. Uh, thank you for attending, Valerie. Thank you so much for taking the time to put together this great 
deck and all this valuable information. I uh, hope lots of folks will reach out because you can really help them execute um, all of these wonderful strategies. So um, thanks, everybody. Hopefully, we'll see you back here on Monday and be well. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye.